Faith Investor Services is dedicated exclusively to faith-based investment. Through our partnership with the Knights of Columbus, we are committed to providing Catholics and other people of faith with the opportunity to invest in a way that not only helps meet their financial goals, but also upholds the principles of their traditional values. Investors should feel confident knowing that KOCG will invest in companies that respect human life. To learn more, visit faithinvestorservices.com. The Order of Malta presents the World Day of the Sick Healing Mass, broadcasting live from St. Bernadette Catholic Church in Scottsdale, Arizona. Welcome, and thank you for joining us. Saturday blessings to you all. Better late than never. It's a bit chilly here in Scottsdale, but our hearts are full and our souls are warmed by the Holy Spirit. I'm Timothy Jeffries, the Chancellor of the Western United States for the Ancient Religious Order of Malta, founded in Jerusalem in the 11th century. And I'm so pleased and honored to welcome you to our seventh annual World Day of the Sick healing mass. We've had a few technical difficulties <laughs> today, uh, and we're just going to chalk it up as uh, penance uh, for our sins, to be candid. Uh, today is an important day because throughout the world, the Order of Malta is hosting World Day of the Sick healing masses for the sick throughout the world to bless them, to hold them, and to bring them closer to Jesus. Uh, given all the technical difficulties we had today, I'm particularly pleased that I'm seated next to a wonderful and holy priest, and that is my dear, dear friend, uh, Father Tom Enneking. He's the major superior of the Crozier Order here in the United States, and he's a chaplain of the Order of Malta. Father Tom, welcome. So glad to have you here. Thank you, Timothy wonderful to be a part of this very special celebration. As we gather today, we're looking and looking forward to the blessing of celebrating two sacraments. So, of course, the principal sacrament during the World Day of the Sick Masses is the anointing of the sick. We, we know in our Catholic faith that the sacraments are these celebrations with very concrete, elemental, uh, Parts of creation, oil, water, bread, and through our prayer and our faith, these elements become instruments of God's grace and mercy. And so today we celebrate the sacrament of anointing and the sacrament of the Eucharist. So, St. Bernadette, whose feast day is tomorrow, St. Bernadette, who was blessed to behold Mother Mary in Lourdes. She said the Holy Eucharist bathes the tormented souls in light and love. Then the suffering souls appreciate Jesus' words. Come, all of you who are sick, I will restore your health. We see that the processions have started. Enjoy.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Be with you. And with My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have come to celebrate the sacraments of anointing of the sick and of the Holy Eucharist. We welcome our brothers and sisters joining us from around the globe. online and on television. Christ is always present when we gather in his name. We pray that the sick may be restored to health by the gift of his mercy and made whole in his fullness. Queridos hermanos en Cristo, Estamos reunidos aquí para celebrar los sacramentos de la unción de los enfermos y de la Sagrada Eucaristía. Siempre que nos reunamos en su nombre, Cristo está presente entre nosotros. Le pedimos que los enfermos recobren por el don de la misericordia de Dios, recobran su salud y queden totalmente restablecidos. The Kyrie. Kyrie. God, who will that our infirmities be born by your only begotten Son to show the value of human suffering. Listen in kindness to our prayers for our brothers and sisters who are sick. Grant that all who are oppressed by pain, distress, or other afflictions, may know that they are chosen among those proclaimed blessed and are united to Christ in his suffering for the salvation of the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. O Lord of mercy, with you is wisdom, who knows your works and was present when you made the world, who understands what is pleasing in your eyes and what is conformidable with your commands. Send her forth from your holy heavens and from your glorious throne dispatch her, that she may be with me and work with me, that I may know what is your pleasure. For she knows and understands all things. 
and will guide me discreetly in my affairs and safeguard me by her glory. For what man knows God's counsel? Well, who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or whoever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent her Holy Spirit from on high. And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight, and men learned what was your pleasure and were saved by wisdom. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pedro Bendito sea Dios, Padre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo 
por su gran misericordia, porque al resucitar a Jesús Cristo entre los muertos, nos consiguió renacer la esperanza de una vida nueva, que no puede corromperse ni mancharse y que Él nos tiene reservada como haciendo en el cielo. Porque ustedes tienen fe en Dios, Él los protege con su poder, para que alcancen la salvación que les tiene preparada y que Él revelará al final de los tiempos. Por esta razón, alégrense, aun cuando ahora tengan que sufrir un poco por adversidades de todas clases, en fin de que su fe, sometida a la prueba, se haya digna de alabanza, gloria y honor el día de la manifestación de Cristo. Porque la fe de ustedes es más preciosa que el oro, y el oro se acrisola por el fuego. A Cristo Jesús no lo han visto ustedes, mas sin embargo lo aman. Al creer en la hora sin verlo, se llenan de una alegría radiante, indescriptible, seguros de alcanzar la salvación de sus almas, que es la meta de la fe. Palabra de Dios. took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached him, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord.
Today is a very beautiful day as we honor the World Day of the Sick, first promulgated by Pope St. John Paul II. And he associated it with Our Lady of Lourdes because we know that Our Lady of Lourdes is very miraculous when it comes to healing so many sick people that come to her with love and devotion. And through the ministry, of course, very beautiful ministry of the Knights and the Dames of Malta. The beautiful Knights and Dames of Malta had their beginning in the year 1050. Let's see, how far away is that? 1050. Wow, so far back, I can't even count. And the Knights and Dames of Malta have been ministering to the poor and the sick for all of these generations. And we're so blessed to have them here present with us today. And so blessed to have all of the Order of Malta throughout the whole world doing this beautiful ministry of incarnating, incarnating the divine presence of Jesus. Mercy and compassion to so many who are sick and in need. The beautiful order of Malta is the living presence of Jesus among the poor and those who are sick. Just to think of the Holy Gospel, so much of the Holy Gospel is the life of Jesus. And Jesus came to remind us, whoever sees me sees the Father. Jesus the Word made flesh. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as we heard in the Holy Gospel, how he touched, how he cured even the leper. So Jesus Christ continues to be among us and upon all his holy people with healing, consoling, and strengthening power, having authority with all those who approach him with faith. Imagine, Jesus says, whoever sees me sees the Father. Jesus, the incarnate, the incarnate representation of the mercy the love, the compassion of God our Father. As he healed the deaf, the blind, the mute, the lame, the crippled, the leprous, and yes, even sinners. For we think about another healing, that of Bartimaeus, when Bartimaeus came to Jesus, Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? Hello, what do you mean? Can't you see I'm blind? Of course I want to see. But Jesus 
had another gift for Bartimaeus. He healed his physical blindness and gave him the gift of faith. Bartimaeus followed Jesus along the way. And so, yes, there is spiritual healing that continues even to our day. But also, there are spiritual healings that happen, especially in the sacrament of reconciliation. Every single time that we go to confession, we experience the healing power of Jesus Christ. And so it is for us today, my brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is with us. As he promised, I am with you. I am with you. And we can approach him with all of our physical and spiritual needs, trusting in the mercy, the love, the compassion of God the Father himself shown to us in and through his beloved Son, Jesus Christ. So there is physical healing, there's spiritual healing, and there's another type of healing. We call it mental health. We're so blessed here in the Diocese of Phoenix to have a new bishop, Bishop John Dolan. And his very first action in the new diocese was to establish a diocesan office for mental health. So needed today, so overlooked for so many generations, we thought that people with mental health we're simply crazy. No, not so. And so today, some of you might come forth for the anointing of holy oil given to us in the epistle of St. James in the New Testament. St. James says, if there's anyone sick among you, call for the elder of the church. Let them anoint them with holy oil and pray over them. This prayer made in faith will save the sick person from their illness. And if they have committed sin, it will be forgiven. So some of you will come forward with physical ailments. Some of you will come forward with spiritual ailments. Some of you will come forth with mental illness. But it is the same Jesus Christ who invites all of us to trust in his mercy, in his love and compassion as he extends his divine mercy upon each and every one of us. Let us pray 
for one another. That the healing power of Jesus Christ may be experienced in the depth of our heart and soul and mind and restore us to the fullness of life which he so wants to give. A few words in Spanish. Queridos hermanos, qué gusto poder estar aquí hoy día para celebrar el sacramento de la unción de los enfermos. Qué gusto poder reunirnos como comunidad de fe. Porque sabemos que Jesucristo es el mismo ayer, hoy y por siempre. Y en el Santo Evangelio sabemos que mucho del ministerio de Jesús era sanación. La sanación de los cuerpos de tantos enfermos que se acercaron para su ayuda. Los ciegos, los cojos, los mangos, los leprosos. Pero también Jesús vino a sanar los pecadores y las almas. Y por eso también nosotros hoy día nos acercamos a Cristo para que nos sane cuerpo y alma. Y también como nuestro obispo John Dolan comenzó un nuevo departamento en la cancillería para la salud mental. Tenemos que reconocer que uno que tiene necesidades, debilidades, enfermedades mentales no son solo locos, pero que son enfermedades de la mente que también necesitan terapias y medicamento y que también necesitan la gracia santificadora y la gracia de sanación que Cristo tanto quiere dar. Queridos hermanos, a rezar uno por el otro durante esta Santa Misa para que la gracia de la sanación sea de cuerpo, de alma, de mente, pueda fluir ante toda persona que viene con fe para experimentar el sacramento de la unción de los enfermos. Y que Dios le bendiga a todos. At this time, we will pray the litany of anointing, and then the Order of Malta will bring forward two representatives to be anointed and to receive the laying on of hands as representatives of all those gathered here and watching at home. Then Bishop Navarres will say a prayer of thanksgiving over the oil, and he will then be joined by the other priest who will assist in anointing all who need it. 
If you are older than seven years of age and your health is in danger because of sickness or old age, you may come up to receive the sacrament of anointing of the sick and your ushers will direct you to the anointing priest for your section. En este tiempo vamos a rezar la letanía de unción y pues miembros de la orden de Malta va a traer dos de los que serán ungidos para la imposición de los manos. El obispo va a rezar una oración sobre los óleos y luego se le unirán con los sacerdotes que asistirán en la unción. Si es mayor de siete años y su salud está en peligro por enfermedad o vejez, puede venir para recibir el sacramento de la unción de los enfermos. Please stand for the litany of anointing. Let us pray to God for our brothers and sisters and for all those who devote themselves to caring for them. The response will be, Lord, have mercy. Bless them and fill them with new hope and strength. Lord, have mercy. Relieve their pain. Lord, have mercy. Free them from sin and do not let them give way to temptation. Lord, have mercy. Sustain all the sick with your power. Lord, have mercy. Assist all who care for the sick. Lord, have mercy. Give life and health to our brothers and sisters on whom we lay our hands in your name. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. We love you. Mm -hmm. 
mal kommt da ein neuer Hotel. Brothers and sisters, as we give thanks to God for the gift of sacramental grace symbolized by the use of this holy oil, I invite you to respond to each of these three prayers of praise by saying, Blessed be God who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, the Almighty Father. You sent your Son to live among us and bring us salvation. Blessed be God, who heals us in Christ. Praise to you, God, the only begotten Son. You humbled yourself to share in our humanity, and you heal our infirmities. Praise to you, God, the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Your unfailing power gives us strength in our bodily weakness. Be God, who us in God of mercy, ease the sufferings and comfort the weakness of your servants, whom the church anoints with this holy oil. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Do I go down? Okay. Do I use the lighter or no? Okay. your forehead and the palm of your hands. What is your name? David. David. Welcome back. This is Timothy Jeffries, the Chancellor of the Western United States, uh, your anchor for this uh, broadcast. Such a blessing to be with you. Right now, uh, the anointing of the sick is taking place. It's one of the most beautiful sacraments in Holy Mother Church. When one receives the anointing, they are wiped entirely of the stain of sin. They are returned to their baptismal state. Thanks be to God. Well, speaking of blessings, I'm joined by a fellow Knight of Malta, Dr. Vincent Nguyen. He's a very prominent and respected palliative care doctor uh, in Southern California. He flew here to be with us 
so we can talk about his very, very special ministry. Uh, Dr. Nguyen, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Thank you very much, Tim. It's a pleasure to be here in this cool day here in Phoenix. It is a bit chilly. That's why I've donned the jacket and you're a wise man to don yours as well. <laughs> thank you. So, Doctor, how many times have you been to Lourdes? Um, I've been to Lourdes six times. Um, three times on my own and three times with the Order of Malta. Mm. And, um, you know, the, the first time I been to, went to Lourdes, it wasn't something that I wanted to go. I was, I was a teenager, reluctant to go with my parents. And it was there, the first experience, that I felt that something was so beautiful, sacred at this site, where I said, I didn't want to go here. I mean, I didn't want to go here. And um, it wasn't until I walked into the main, stood in front of Our Lady, closed my eye, pretended I was praying like everyone else. And this is when I had this, overcame with this energy. And I felt like I need to apologize to my parents. So I sat there and I cried and I hugged. I said, Mom, Dad, please forgive me. That was my transformative moment. And the second time I came back, let me tell you a little bit there. The second time I came back was with my wife. And uh, she was a convert to Catholicism. We talked about, you know, how do we, you know, let's go somewhere fun. So we did go to Paris, Switzerland. I said, let's go to Lourdes. And so we did. And then we thought about, well, what, someday we have children, we'll take them with us as well. And we did too. But, you know, all three of those experiences have been just a one-day trip in and out. Mm. But as we're talking about going with the Order of Malta, being there for seven, eight days, one day just doesn't do it. The seven, eight Amen. days, that immersive experience, in which has really profoundly changed my life and my children's life who've been coming to Lord to volunteer. Oh, so beautiful. So okay. beautiful. Thanks be to God. Amen. So, Doctor, again, you're a palliative care doctor. You're helping people carry their cross, whether they're Catholic or not, on their way, God willing, to heaven. But part of your ministry is you're bringing Lords via virtual reality yes. to these suffering souls. Tell us about this extraordinary initiative. Right. So the palliative care is, you know, caring for the whole person, not only the medical, the physical, the psychological, it's also the spiritual aspect. And the beautiful spiritual aspect about this is people always look at themselves and say, why is this happening to me? If there's such a God, why am I suffering? You know, where, and then people who are broken, you know, where they find healing. And where's the best place where people all over the world, we talk about six million people, pil pil six pil Six million pilgrims come to Lourdes every year and seek of healing and solace and hope. Yes. And that is Lourdes. So as we do this, we, I recognize that, you know, there's many people who want to come, but they can't because of physical ailments or physical limitation or financial limitations. But what if we bring Lourdes to people? And I've seen beautiful videos that you and your team have done, and, and you can go on YouTube and find these things. But one of the things we don't see is, what if we bring things in, in a virtual reality? It's like people can put themselves in that moment to escape from their physical suffering and pain and, and have that emotional peace and be in the sacredness of the site called Lourdes. Mm. And, um, and that, that is part of became my ministry, you might say, quietly. I don't tout that I got this wonderful video. When I come and visit with patients, I always check where they're at, where they're at with their disease, their understanding and, and their fears as well as their hope. And I kind of bring up and said, well, you know, have you ever heard of a place called Lourdes? And he said, yes. So and what do you know about Lourdes? And I, and I, don't have, I have a little bottle of water from Lourdes. I give it to them. And, you know, you see the transformation. That's what I had before I had the video. Now I'm able to prescribe both Lourdes water and, uh, and the videos with my patients and um, for them to seek solace. You know, when you lay there in the hospital, you're, you're, you're sad. You're, you're, you're alone. And. Where do you find peace? Where do you find meaning? Yes. Yes. So uh, our time is racing by, yeah. but do you have a, a beautiful moment or a miracle you can share as a result of uh, blessing uh, a patient or two with oh. this virtual reality experience? You know, the virtual reality piece is something relatively new. So I introduce this to my patients. And the tears that happens, I mean, it's just, you know, the way in which we talk about virtual reality is you put this headgear on, but you realize that, you know, not everybody has access to headgears. So we created this in a, in a um, put it on, on a YouTube site in which people can have access to. It's called Sacred Spaces in VR. And so we have that access for folks. Um, so, you know, that's something that I, I want to be able to promote and, and not only share with my patients, but for anyone around the world. 
interview this astro beautiful uh, place of beautiful beautiful sacred spaces vr in vr yeah. perfect awesome and please speaking of cool places go on the web to find holy things go to praywithmalta.com and share your special prayer requests and we will personally bring them to lords and we already have 1900 prayers and that's without me promoting it but now I'm promoting it so let's get to 2000 plus uh, God bless you thank you so much uh, for being with us and Dr. Nguyen thank you so much for your very very special vocation thank you very much Tim very All right. much for being here God bless you my man I love you Welcome back again. The anointing of the sick continues, and honestly, you can feel the holiness emanating from St. Bernadette Parish behind us. St. Bernadette being the 14-year-old little girl in 1858 that was blessed to see Mother Mary 18 times in the grotto in Lourdes. I'm joined by uh, another dear friend, Greg Gilstrap. He's a member of the Order of Malta Auxiliary. Greg was a Malad during our last pilgrimage. You know, he's a strapping stud of a dude. You just never know someone's story. He makes my bad back seem like a good back. Yeah, he has horrible, <laughs> horrible spinal issues, uh, but blessings nonetheless. Greg, welcome. Well, tell us, tell us about your Lord's experience. Well, thank you, first of all, Mr. Chancellor, for uh, having me here. My Lord's experience was amazing. I, I, I look at it as it was beautiful. And it was beautiful, first of all, when we pulled into town. Uh, I'm a former director of tourism for the state of Arizona, and I've been around the world seeing great sights. And Lord's is so beautiful. The scenery, mm. the foothills of the Pyrenees, the architecture at the domain where that surrounds the grotto. Amen. It was it was so beautiful to see. But then as you got there and you really got closer to the moment of Bernadette and Mary, and you see the beauty in that, of how Mary came to the poorest of the poor, little four foot seven Bernadette, True. and changed the world. I mean really those two, what happened in those apparitions have given so many people hope around the world. Oh, so true, so true, so. And there was one other aspect, the beauty also included the people. Mm -hmm. And particularly the Order of Malta who hosted me there is, I went to Lourdes and I tell people there were no jerks. Yeah. <laughs> and I've heard you say before that your better self is in Lourdes. And, yeah. I, and I found that to me. And uh, Bishop Navarras talked about being administered to and, and they certainly did that to me, and it was, it was beautiful. But the love that people showed in Lourdes made me leave there and want to administer to others. Uh, so beautiful, Greg. So splendidly stated. 
uh, we were blessed to serve you for eight days. And what I tell people all the time is as much as we seek to serve the Malads, uh, you all end up serving us that much more with your beautiful witness to suffering and the joy that can still be found. Uh, the first day we're in Lourdes, uh, that morning, that first morning, is the washing of the feet. Tell our viewers. Oh, uh, it's such a that. such a humbling experience to have a knight come up and wash your feet. And you know that's what Jesus did for his disciples. He said, "If if I wash your feet, this is what you should do." And and throughout the whole week, even though they weren't washing your feet, people were administering to you. What do you? Do you need to take a rest? Do you want to go to the grotto? Do you want to see the Stations of the Cross? And they would take you there. And Dr. Nguyen, who's just a beautiful human being, uh, was one of my hosts, and he actually pulled the cart. They got me around Lords one day, and uh, he didn't even complain about uh, having to pull a fat guy. <laughs> Well, you're not bad. You're deceptively slim, my brother. Deceptively slim. So, so Greg, uh, and again, you know, the guy suffers every day, but here he is uh, bringing joy to me as I seek to uh, care for him. Greg, what, uh, share with our viewers just an, another experience just to bring lords to them. You know, one of the, the neat things is uh, people have always said I'm, I'm praying for you. Hey, you got another back surgery. I'm praying for you. I said, you know what? Do me a favor. Pray for my wife. She's a beautiful human being. And what I saw when I met with the other Malads is they, they're praying for other people too. They pray for their caregivers. And I was surprised all these people that have chronic conditions or severe health issues, they were all joyful. And I want, Amen. To, ta I want to take that to the world. Amen. Amen. Well, buddy, you're a beautiful exemplar of the suffering, broken body of Christ. And that is a high compliment from another um, bad back brother. So God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure Greg's bless you as he blesses me every time I see him. God bless, God bless you. you. I love you, man. I love you, too. As we have heard in the beautiful homily by Bishop Navarres, there are many aspects of healing. So Lourdes is so well known as a place that people go looking for physical healing. One of the insights that the members of Malta have come to and often share, it's a proverb, you might say, that really reflects the wisdom of over 900 years of serving the sick and the poor. When people come to Lourdes, they come looking for a particular healing, and people often say, the healing that I came for and looked for, uh, what I received was a different blessing. So I came looking for physical healing, and I received 
the healing that I really needed. That insight uh, was reflected beautifully in Bishop Navarro's homily as he talked about uh, the physical healings that people seek, but then also these other dimensions of our human being that are affected when we are suffering. So whether it's uh, the emotional, the affective, and especially the spiritual side of things. Uh, when people are suffering, there's a great and very natural temptation to feel that somehow God has abandoned me or God has uh, you know, stepped away from me. And why am I going through this? And that why question is uh, very significant. And so the spiritual healing that comes through the anointing of a sick and, and certainly transmitted through Lourdes as a place of healing is just one of those ways where these multiple ways that we can be healed uh, come forward. The care that the members of Malta demonstrate and show to people that Greg witnessed to is just a, a perfect example of how this healing of the different dimensions of our life can take place. So when someone puts their hand on your arm and uh, transmits their care and concern, it's a tremendous uh, consolation that we receive in experiencing that. And so, uh, again, the physical healing obviously is what uh, we desire most for people. We, God wants people to be well. But then as life unfolds, uh, the mystery of suffering uh, does lead us to open ourselves to other ways that God can heal us. And so we are grateful that uh, God's love is so pervasive and can provide all these different kinds of healing that really help us to be people who are signs of hope, much as uh, Greg demonstrated in his uh, sharing that even with the suffering and pain he knows, he's a man of joy. Let us pray. Father in heaven, through this holy anointing, grant our brothers and sisters comfort in their suffering when they are afraid. Give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, afford them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you.
Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees, with all their hearts they seek him. Give me life, O Lord. Pray, brethren, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise you, Lord, in his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, Grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. It's okay. You don't have stoles on. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Father of mercies and faithful God, for you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. human race and who always walk with us on our journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
on the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, Eduardo, his auxiliary, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all these saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through 
him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for heaven. the Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Welcome back to uh, Chili Scottsdale at the news desk with Father Tom. Holy Communion is underway, and I'm so pleased and blessed to share with you that we have well over 2,000 prayers for PrayWithMalta.com. So please, oh please, submit your prayer petitions, your special intentions to PrayWithMalta.com, and we'll personally bring them to the sacred grotto in Lourdes. Now we're also pleased to share with you a beautiful five minute video of Father Klein, the pastor of St. Bernadette Parish, a chaplain of the Order of Malta, and he tells us about the very special Lourdes Grotto that they built behind us. Enjoy. are the parish of St. Bernadette and it seemed like a natural fit to want to have something to uh, honor Our Lady, Our Lady of Lourdes specifically. And uh, since uh, the grotto in Lourdes, the grotto, is such a popular place for people to, to visit, we thought, well, maybe we could give them a little taste of that right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And um, so we wanted the grotto to be a place that would kind of point to, obviously, Our Lady and uh, build people's devotion, their love for Our Lady, and also a reminder of what happened in Lourdes. Uh, with uh, St. Bernadette and Our Lady of Lourdes. Building a 
grotto this day and age. Where, where do you even begin? Um, so we, we had uh, a few companies that we interviewed, and uh, there was such a massive project that we weren't even sure that anyone could do it. And so it really was kind of, I think, an act of God saying, um, this is a company that we would go with. We decided, and they weren't even sure what they were going to be building because they're like, what's a grotto? And so we had to kind of work with them and describing what we saw, giving them a lot of pictures of the grotto in, in France. And we tried to replicate that here. So it's based on some things that they do and that you would see in normal like pool, backyard pools kind of thing, but uh, on a much grander scale. We had to involve the city. There's all kinds of in, uh, structural engineers that had be called and involved in the process as well. So it was quite an undertaking to, because you don't just build, uh, these aren't a common thing. You can imagine building such a, a massive structure that we didn't want it to be an eyesore. We wanted it to be, uh, you know, kind of fit the environment. So we wanted the architect, the designers, to make it look like rock, natural rock that you would see out in out in the in the real world. And so it was, it was important for us to make it look natural. We wanted to have real, as much as possible, real plants that are growing throughout it. And so we wanted it to be um, something that looked like it fit the the, the terrain, like it, it was it belonged here. It was important for us as we built this grotto that it would in include some something that people could point to or look to in Lourdes. And so we actually were able to obtain a stone from uh, Lourdes, the grotto at Lourdes. Um, there was a cleaning project that went on in Lourdes and so they had some loose rocks that were there and we were able to have a, uh, someone bring back an actual stone that was incorporated into the grotto here. Uh, actually, so people could come to the grotto, touch the stone and feel some connection with uh, uh, Lourdes in, in France. We also have uh, water here. It's, uh, you know, again, in Lourdes, the, Our Lady's told Bernadette, St. Bernadette, to kind of scratch around the ground and a spring came forward and the water is a huge component. Uh, as you know, in Lourdes, maybe uh, you know that already. We wanted that to be a part here. And so we have water feature here where you can come and have some water. Is it Lourdes water? No, but it's still kind of, we try to capture that as well. And then we also have the candles. Uh, it was important for people like to come and light a candle and you know remember a loved one and so we have the candles as part of the project uh, here as well which is not necessarily um, you don't see that at the grotto in Lourdes but candles in Lourdes and lighting a candle with the big candlelight procession that they have we wanted to incorporate that as well started this project the parishioners were a little nervous about what we were doing because we, we were able to share with them some photos and renderings but it was it was kind of a work in progress we weren't exactly sure how it was going to turn out in the end it was an artist, you know, uh, renderings that, that you know, and slowly came into shape. But even it was being built, they thought, wow, Father, this is very big. Uh, what is this going to be? And uh, now that it's complete, they are pleasantly surprised and actually many of them so grateful that it's here and now that it's complete. It was uh, originally supposed to be a three-month project and it turned into over two years for a whole host of reasons. But uh, ultimately, we were able to complete it and the parishioners are happy with how real it looks um, and the fact that we can honor Our Lady in such a way It's always been our hope in the, the, from the get-go in building this, completing this project, that people would be able to come here and find it a place of hope and healing and mercy. Um, and, and that has been our experience so far. People have come here. I've had families. I've come here late in the evening, 10, 10, 11 o'clock, and there'd be families kneeling uh, in front, praying the rosary or just spending time in prayer. And we see that happen over and over again on a daily basis. Welcome back, uh, Timothy Jeffries here. And we have close to 3,000 prayers submitted via praywithmalta.com. We've got a short segment here, and so I want to turn to my dear beloved friend, Father Tom. We are having the best time. I love this guy. I love this guy. Father Tom, talk to us about an apparition or two in this short segment. Thank you, Timothy. Some people may not be so familiar with the story of St. Bernadette and what happened at Lourdes. So the first apparition happened on February 11. That's why tomorrow is the feast day of St. Bernadette, in which she went looking for wood. She was a, from a very poor family. She and her sister and a friend went down to the grotto, what today is the grotto, and at the time it was a niche and it was known as Masaviel. And uh, the two other friends 
managed to cross the river, Gav is the name of the river, and Bernadette stayed on the other side. And as uh, she was looking around preparing to cross the river, she heard this gentle breeze and it got her attention. And she turned and she saw what she always would say, a lady. She didn't know who it was, but she was drawn to it. And what was beautiful about what happened in this first apparition, first of all, that gentle breeze. When we think about how God moves into our lives, God moves like that gentle breeze, just like the quiet breeze outside the cave with Elijah. Secondly, when the Blessed Mother spoke to her, she spoke to Bernadette, this very uh, poorly educated 14-year-old young woman in her own language. And hearing that message and the uh, expression of love and affection for her in her own language led her to trust and it opened her heart to what Mary had come to bring, which was this message of hope and healing. And it led Bernadette to start praying a rosary. And so we, we see in this first apparition this beautiful way that Mary reflects the way that God comes into our lives in gentle breezes and in the most ordinary activities that we can be involved in. Bernadette was collecting wood and she had this encounter with Our Lady. Our Lady came to encounter her. So the next time you're doing the dishes or vacuuming the family room or you're heading to work, you're pounding a nail on a construction site, do not rule out the fact that God can come and encounter you, reach out to you, and touch your heart with love and mercy. And thanks be to God, uh, Holy Mother Mary, Our Lady of Lords, came to Bernadette 18 times in a very, very short time frame of a couple months. And although Bernadette was told time and time again, do not return there, Bernadette felt the saintly call to do so. And we're so blessed by it. We're so blessed by it. We hope you are enjoying this coverage. And now we return back to the Mass.
Let us pray. Merciful God, in celebrating these mysteries, your people have received the gifts of unity and peace. Heal the afflicted and make them whole. In the name of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
On behalf of the Knights and Dames of the Order of Malta, I want to thank you for coming to the 2024 World Day of the Sick Healing Mass. We hope that we have brought a little bit of the Lord's experience of peace and hope to each one of you. After the Mass, uh, in the parish hall, there will be a Catholic fair. At the Catholic fair, there are many wonderful Catholic organizations and ministries here in the diocese uh, to visit, and we encourage you to go there. At the Catholic fair, there will also be Lord's Holy Water vials available, one per family, at the Order of Malta table. Finally, uh, we would ask that you exit through the, the entrance to the church in the back there so that, you can, that each family can pick up a flower. And the flowers will then be placed in front of Our Lady at the grotto. So if you can in, exit the back there and then go to the left after you have the flower and there'll be a procession to place the flowers in front of Our Lady. And now I would like to ask the Knights, Dames, Auxiliary Members, and Provisional Members of the Order of Malta to please stand and join me in saying the prayer of the Order. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, thou hast seen fit to enlist me for thy service among the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem. I humbly entreat thee through the intercession of the Most Holy Virgin of Palermo, Blessed Gerard, blessed Gerard and all the saints, to keep me faithful to the traditions of our order. Be it mine to practice and defend the Catholic, the Apostolic, the Roman faith against the enemies of religion. Be it mine to practice charity towards my neighbors, especially the poor and the sick. Give me the strength I need to carry out this my resolve, forgetful of myself learning ever from thy holy gospel, a spirit of deep and generous Christian devotion, striving ever to promote God's glory, the world's peace, and all that may benefit the order of St. John of Jerusalem. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would those who provide care for the sick please stand for a blessing. Lord God, could everybody please uh, stretch out hands in blessing? Lord God, in your loving kindness, you sent your Son to be our shepherd, guide, and divine physician. Continue to send workers into your vineyard to sustain and assist your holy people. Bless these caregivers. Let your Holy Spirit uphold them always as they take up the responsibility to care for the sick. Through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Lady of Lourdes, may God strengthen your faith, delivering you from fear, and grant you and the ones you care for his peace. En la caridad has enviado a tu Hijo para ser nuestro pastor, guía y sanador. Continúa enviando trabajadores a tu viña para sostener y apoyar a tu pueblo enfermo. Bendice a estos sus siervos. Deja que tu Espíritu Santo siempre los mantenga mientras ellos toman la responsabilidad de cuidar a los enfermos. Con la intercesión de la Santísima Virgen María, Nuestra Señora de Lourdes, que Dios los fortalezca en su fe, librándolos del temor y que les conceda la paz para que ellos puedan cuidar a sus hermanos y hermanas con ternura, cariño y atención. Esto, todo esto pedimos por Jesucristo nuestro Señor.
Amen. Here, hold that for a minute. I can't leave without expressing my great joy and thanksgiving to all those who made this momentous Mass so very beautiful. Thank you to Father Don Klein, the pastor here at St. Bernadette Parish, my brother deacons who serve here, and for so many of you, the holy people of God. I'd like to thank the Crozier Fathers for being here with us to administer the sacrament of the sick, as well as the ladies of St. Peter Claver and the beautiful, wonderful, faithful Knights of Columbus who grace me as my honor guard everywhere I go. To you, my brothers and sisters who are of Oriental descent and especially the Vietnamese community, today is Lunar New Year. And so I want to congratulate all of the Vietnamese community present and those watching on the different medias of communication and wishing them many blessings on this new year. Especially as I say, Chuk Mung Nam Moi. Thank you. Please stand. Okay, Deacon, get that out of my way. Oh, I got to say the blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow for the blessing. May the God of all consolation bless you in every way and guard your hope all the days of your life. Amen. May God restore you to health and grant you salvation. Amen. May God fill your heart with peace and lead you to eternal life. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you and all of your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world. In the world of souls, amen. amen.
faithful are streaming out to our Catholic there. And I'm joined by Father Klein, the uh, wonderful pastor of St. Bernadette Parish, also a chaplain of the Order of Malta. Father, thank you so much for your patience today. It was uh, exciting with all the technical difficulties. Tell me, uh, tell me about the Mass. Every Mass is moving, but was there something today that moved you more than usual? Well, yeah. You know, there's always... Uh, something that the Lord has for us in store for us, despite the enemy's efforts to try to thwart our plans with the technical difficulties, but we wouldn't let that stop us. The Lord is the Lord of all and the King of Kings, and so we were happy just to be able to move forward despite the, the enemy's efforts, and I think it was a glorious message. I was, I was humbled by the, just the variety of people who came, shapes and sizes and different degrees of uh, infirmities and uh, it was just, it's always very humbling just to see the, and they, and people were genuinely happy to be here. And you could tell there was just this great spirit of, of prayerfulness and, and uh, gratefulness, you know, that they, we had this opportunity to be able to pray together and to bring our, our, our hurts, our sufferings, our sorrows to the Lord. And uh, I, I just thought it was just an opportunity, a beautiful opportunity to be able to pray together as God's people. Lovely, lovely. And thank you so much, Father, for the grotto here. It's special. Uh, we were blessed to serve together in Lourdes with the Order of Malta. Tell us uh, briefly about that experience. Well, Lourdes is a very special place, and I thought maybe we could bring that right here to Scottsdale, Arizona, because there would be people who might not be able to make it to Lourdes, which is, of course, beautiful. Uh, you know, there's no replacing that. But uh, so, yeah, Lourdes is, is that special place where God's goodness, his mercy, his love, his hope is extended to those who might not, you know, know of his mercy and love, might not have hope. Yeah. And I've just, my experience there has been people who have uh, struggled and, and, and brought their, their struggles and all that, but also their faith. Yeah. That is just over, you know, overarching all of that, and to see their expressions of love, and for Our Lady, uh, who brings us, of course, to our Lord and uh, our Eucharistic King, and so beautiful experience at Lords and at, and here in the at our Grotto. Well, thank you so much, Father. Now we're going to turn it back to uh, Father Tom Anakin. No, we're just going to say goodbye to you and God bless you and thank you for joining us. A big smile. Oh, that's awesome, man. Thank you for giving them a reason to smile again. Thanks for letting us draw together. Thank you for helping her keep her home and her family together. Gracias por todo. Because it all goes back to treating everybody with dignity and respect. Thank you for helping St. Vincent de Paul feed, clothe, house, and heal our neighbors in need all year long. Please continue to remember them in every season.